Bernard Caduce having a minimum fee release clause of £85 million is not news to West Ham fans. The problem is, we believed it was only active next summer. However, a very prominent German journalist is claiming that is not the case, and in fact it's active this summer. So should a club bid £85 million for Mohamed Caduce today, West Ham United would have no option other than to accept it. That is today's big news, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. Now, as I always say regarding transfer rumours, but not just that, just any reports, such as the reports we're hearing at the minute in regards to West Ham's transfer budget, none of us really know the truth. So make your own mind up. It all depends on who and what you believe. However, when it comes to this report, which is that Caduce has an £85 million release clause, which is active this summer, I believe it. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not saying you have to believe it. I'm just saying why I believe it. Now, there's going to be a lot of clicking in this video, so apologies, but... It's evidence. So we're going to start with the report and it comes from Flavian Plattenberg who says currently there are no concrete offers from Hamid Caduce on the table. Caduce with a release clause of 85 million this summer, contract valid until 2028. Internally, the 23 year old winger has not yet indicated that he definitely wants to leave the club. Arguably a positive thing. There's nothing there that suggests Caduce wants to leave. It's just that the minimum fee release clause is active now. When he did that tweet, a lot of West Ham fans went back to him and said that's incorrect because we were told that's incorrect. West Ham fans said you need to check this out. We believe it's only active next summer. This is fake news. It's rumours. You've got your year wrong. It's a typo, whatever. So Florian's obviously gone and verified his information and he came back later on in the day. Eight hours later, Florian Plettenberg came back and said, being told again, the release clause for Mohamed Caduce of 85 million is already active this summer. Release clause can be activated at any time. It is not only valid starting next summer. So he's gone and checked his information, which is a good thing to do. He put what he believed was to be the truth out there. West Ham fans came back and said that's wrong, and he's gone and verified information. He's doubled down on it and said, nope, what I'm originally claiming is correct. Now, the reason I believe it is because of the source of this, because it is Plettenberg. And there's context regarding the sort of the West Ham side of journalism as well here. When we initially signed Mohamed Caduce, there was this concern among West Ham fans. I had this concern that there was a release clause. And we were told by the West Ham side of things, so there's no release clause. But it didn't really add up because we know the reason Caduce didn't join Brighton, he was in advanced negotiations to join Brighton. And we know the reason he did not join Brighton in the end wasn't financially, it was because they wouldn't agree to the release clause or the fee of the release clause. So that is why that deal broke down and we end up signing him. So there was a bit of suspicion. Well, hang on a minute. How come he's decided to join us without that? Maybe it was wages. Maybe it was because we had European football. But then it came out eventually, and I think it was David Ornstein originally broke it, that there was actually an £85 million release clause. Then it came out from the West Ham side of things, who originally told us, nope, there isn't one. They came out and said, actually, there is one, but it's only active next summer, summer 2025. So remain calm. It's the same as Lucas Paqueta's. And I think that's possibly where the problem here has come in terms of the reporting, because we know Lucas Paqueta had an £85 million release clause, and we knew it was active a year after joining West Ham. So it was a further, well, two years after joining West Ham, but he'd be here for two full seasons before that release clause was active. And I think maybe they were just guilty of assuming that this, it was the same clause from Mohamed Kadus. But the reason I believe Plettenberg is because of the archive of evidence he has that he knows someone at West Ham. I believe, and this is just my opinion, I believe he knows Tim Stiden. And I'm going to show you why I think he believes Tim Stiden. So we're going to start with this one. He had an exclusive interview or snippet of information, some quotes from Tim Stiden. Back when he was linked to the sporting director's job at Liverpool, when Stiden just basically spoke to Florian regarding it and said that, you know, he was honoured to be on the list at Liverpool, so on and so forth. But it was an exclusive interview um, from Tim Stiden to Florian Plettenberg. Now, obviously, there's Sky Sports is involved here. Should add that in for context, for balance, for fairness. Plettenberg is the correspondent for Sky Sports for anything Bundesliga. So naturally, there's a link there between Tim Steiden and Florian, given Steiden's previous work experience over in Germany. But we move on to the next one. 
which is just Tim Stiden speaking about the signing of Calvin Phillips. Obviously, this hasn't worked out, but he Tim Stiden gave him snippets of information. Again, we're looking for someone who's a leader. We've known him for a long time. Conversations are good. But Florian is the one that gets these quotes from Tim Stiden. Nobody else. It's Florian Plattenberg. Now, there's other examples as well, and I've picked out just another one here, which isn't about West Ham. It's about Bayern Munich going for Fulham's Polina. However, as you can see there, the third one down there, which is when West Ham inquired, Fulham quoted a price of 60 million. It's, it's information from West Ham. It's all about Polina going after, uh, sorry, Bayern Munich going after Polina, but there's a little bit in there has to come from someone at West Ham, really. And that's the £60 million price tag. Now, there's loads more of these in regards to signing Edson Alvarez, etc., etc. There's plenty more of Steiden and Florian Plattenberg. But the one that caught my attention was last summer. There was, this is the big one that made me take notice of Plattenberg. Because previously, I'd only known him as a Bundesliga correspondent. He's really good for a Bundesliga news. I followed him well before... Steiden was at West Ham because of what he provides from German football news. He's, he's a really good reporter and really reliable for that side of it. Now, I have gone and done a, a thorough check on his Twitter. It doesn't take long. People think you start scrolling through his entire proof. It's not. You can search whenever Plattenberg has tweeted the words West Ham and then it comes up as a search. And all you get is the tweets from Plattenberg with West Ham in it. Prior to Tim Steiden, he barely mentioned us. And whenever he had, it was Bundesliga based. So when West Ham were interested, supposedly, in Angelino, when we signed Thiel Kerr, when we were supposedly after Philip Kostic, remember when we were after him, that's when he's mentioned West Ham. There has been instances where we have gone into the Bundesliga market, like Sebastian Haller. He hasn't covered it. Plettenberg has not covered it. So he has mentioned West Ham occasionally, previously, to Tim, to Tim Steiden. But there's about four or five times as much tweets since Tim Steiden compared to pre-Tim Steiden, despite the fact that, well, he's only really been in power for one year at West Ham. But we're moving on to what I consider the big proof. And this is where there was an R in there. And that this is what made me take notice of Plattenberg, this photo. And it's a done deal. Mav Panos is a player of West Ham. And it's a photo of Mav Panos with the agent and Tim Steiden on his private jet. And as you can see, he's uh, he's put his username on there. He's claimed it so no, no one else can bump that photo. I get it. I get why he's done it. But what's important here is Plattenberg has that photo. There's literally only three people. Well, I suppose a pilot could be there. There's only four or five people that have access to that photo. But I'm going to take a stab and assume that the pilot ain't taking a picture on his own phone. It'll be one of their three mobile that he's taking a picture on. I'm just going to assume it's Tim Stiden's because, as we know, Fabrizio Romano got a very similar photo when it was Mohamed Caduce. So Plattenberg got the exclusive with Mav Panos. Romano got the exclusive photo with Mohamed Caduce. So that is where I'm trying to just establish why I think or prove why I think Plattenberg and Steiden have at least a working relationship. So when Plattenberg puts out this information regarding Caduce, I'm inclined to believe it. When the second one came out, which was I've gone and verified my original claim and I'm I'm confident I am right. He's nailing his colours to the mast. I like it. This this one here, this isn't a I believe. This is a no. This is true. This is factual. Plattenberg is nailing his colours to the mast there. You only do that if you know your information is legit. Like when I said Lingard ain't coming or when I said Ben Johnson's leaving. It's because I'm confident in where I've got the information from. I'm not saying Tim Steiden gave him the, that information. My feeling is he probably did go to Tim Steiden. So why is this information being leaked? Why are we putting it out there? And maybe it does go hand in hand with the previous reports that we've seen this week, which is we don't have any money, but also the reports at the end of the season when Lucas Paqueta got hit with this charge over the betting allegations. Very quickly, it came out this could be a problem for Tim Steiden because supposedly West Ham had their transfer budget and then they were assuming they were going to sell Lucas Paqueta for whatever price, 60, 80, 85 million. But that sale of Lucas Paqueta was almost planned for what Steiden was going to do in the transfer window. So when Paqueta got hit with his trans with their betting allegation and therefore scuppered any chance, chance of a transfer... If Steiden was relying on that money, suddenly 
there's a massive hole in the finances because we're not discussing a five, ten million pound transaction for Danny Ings or something here, or even a fifteen million pound Flynn Downs. This is a sixty, at least a sixty million pound transfer that perhaps the technical director, the guy in charge of the transfer window, was say relying on, expecting to happen. Maybe it has thrown a curveball in our transfer plans and it's a case of, well, who can we sell to raise the money? And there's only three players. Caduce, Bowen, Alvarez. Nobody else is worth that much. You could get a decent fee for a Gerd or Mavropano, certainly. But I mean, it's half of what the other three players are or four players, you include Paqueta, without a, a betting allegation. Maybe that's why this information's come out. Because it would have been easy for whoever Plattenberg has gone to to verify this to say, no, that's not true. What I will say is maybe it's come from the agent. Maybe it has come from Caduce's agent that he's got a release clause and it's going out there in order to attract interest. I might be putting two and two together here and coming up with five. But I'm inclined to believe this. Because Plattenberg, if he needs to verify this, I think it's a, an easy thing for him to do because of his relationship with Tim Stein. And the fact he's come out and doubled down on it speaks volumes to me. If it was only this summer the release clause was active for, I would prefer it to be this summer rather than next summer. My concern is it's just active every transfer window. Hopefully not the January ones. Hopefully we've managed to get it restricted to the summer ones only. And hopefully there's a deadline within those, like the end of July. He has to, otherwise, in August, it's ain't active because it's towards the end of the transfer window, the season's now underway. So hopefully there's restrictions in there with the clause. But if it was only one transfer window in particular, I would prefer it to be this one. I'm not sure anybody pays £85 million for Mohamed Kudus in this transfer window. But if he was to perform really well next season, which I expect him to, I think next summer you might find you've got a queue of clubs willing to pay £85 million for Mohamed Kudus. Because at the moment, he's still a bit of a gamble. He's done it for one year in the Premier League. And we've just seen with Elise, who's done it for longer in the Premier League. Granted, had injury issues, which Kudus doesn't. But he's going for £60 million to buy Munich. And Chelsea decided that the, the Elise transfer was too expensive for them. £60 million. Kudus is 85 so this summer, I would be surprised if he left. I'm calm with all this news, although I believe it. I'm calm that nobody will come in and pay £5 million for Caduce. They might do, and I think they'll be getting a good player. I think if you're a top, top club, I think you should be looking at him. If you're Liverpool and Salah goes, I think it makes sense to come get Mohamed Caduce. I think he's a fantastic player. And when we discussed Edson Alvarez the other day, while I said I think to us it's maybe £60 million, but I don't think he's worth that to Man U. Caduce, I think eighty five million I think he's worth eighty five million to the buying club and I think it'd be quite cheap for us actually. I'd be disappointed if he goes. I understand the release clause being in the contract. It had to be in there to get it over the line because as he showed with Brighton, if it ain't in the contract, he ain't signing. He didn't want to stop his pathway in football because he's got bigger ambitions than West Ham. So does Edson Alvarez. He told us pretty much when he joined, buy a minute, oh yeah, I'd like to go there one day. Got asked about it before the Mexico-Jamaica game, basically said, oh, my new interest, we'll deal with that later. What he didn't say was no. He said, oh, I'm focused with Mexico at the minute. I don't have a problem with it. Players showing ambition don't have an issue. That's the type of player I want to buy. I want us to sign players with ambition to go on and play at the top of the game. I like that motivation. So for this one, I believe the rumour. I hope he doesn't go. I don't think he will go. I'm still pretty calm. This hasn't really changed much for me. I think this is why I'm really calm about it. My concern is, and this is my concern, it's not the release clause. It's more, why is this coming out? Is it tied in with the fact that we do need money, that we need to raise money this summer before we can do what we want to do? I think we've got money to spend. Apparently, we've, we're away to make a third bid for Max Kilman. That's from Fabrizio Romano. It came out just before the start of recording. So I think we've got money. It's just, do we have enough money? Do we have the money we need? It does make you wonder if this is why we signed Galerm. Is this why we've signed him now then, just in case? Because obviously the club will know. Steiden will know Caduce has a release clause. He will know how appealing that is to other clubs. And maybe he's gone, right, I'm going to go get Galerum. So if someone comes in for Caduce, we've already got his replacement. We've got Bowen and Galerum is back up. We've done it. We've bought the replacement already before Caduce leaves. 
maybe it explains that transfer a little bit because I'll be honest with you, as even today, prior to this news, yesterday, even I've been a bit unconvinced as to why we've signed that player. I think, like I said, I'd still not seen him play. But in terms of buying a left-footed right winger, because that's what people have told us, that's what the South American viewers have told us, that's what he, that's where he plays. It could be number 10, but he's best out on the right-hand side. So why have we got a third one? Maybe this is why. Maybe Steiden, well, Steiden will know he's got a release clause. Maybe he's just preparing for the exit and sale of Mohamed Kadus. My concern is we don't get the 85 million and we accept 70, 75 million because we need the money. That can't happen. Because if we are going to give our incoming players release clauses and I understand them I think what you have to do is stick to your guns as well and say no that's the price it's 85 million same with Lucas Paqueta same with what we did with Arsenal last summer okay we said the price was 125 million but nobody really believed that but there was all a belief that 100 million would get the deal done we stuck to it we said no we're, we're, we'll have our 100 million thank you and we've just got to be firm I think which is it's 85 million or you ain't getting him so there you go. There's the reasons I believe Plattenberg, that Caduceus release clause, is active this summer. Doesn't mean it's true. Believe what you want. It's up to you. Make up your own mind. Make up your own opinions. I'm just giving mine. However, I look forward to reading yours in the comments below, so get involved. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch up with you tomorrow.